Welcome to Spread Book Joy. Today I've got a book haul, my birthday book haul. Uh, if you're new to the channel, I'm Jack. If you're not new, welcome back to Spread Book Joy. And today will be the last kind of biggish book haul I'll have for a while. One, I am putting myself on a book buying ban because moving house, and two, I am also, you know, moving costs a lot of money. So I've got to tighten up a bit um, and I don't want to be moving tons and tons and tons of stuff and bringing more stuff into the house that I then have to shift somewhere else. So sadly, this might be my last book haul video for a while, though you never know. So I never say never. Um, the first book I want to show you is a book that I bought with my, you know when you accrue Waterstones points? I had a £10 voucher burning a hole in my pocket. I went into my local Waterstones and for the first time in ages I had absolutely nowhere to be and then tons of time to browse but I was very specific I thought you know what I am not going to buy a book just for the sake of it I am going to buy something if it's something I've never seen before that takes my eye or something that I've just fallen in love with then I'll buy it but other than that I'm not going to do it but I did see something completely caught my eye something I've never seen before and it was this look at this amazing cover do you see and I wonder if you can tell from the cover and the styling why I bought this book. If you've been around here a while, you might know I'm a huge fan of 80s films, particularly films like Labyrinth and The Dark Crystal and Never Ending Story, that kind of thing. And this is called The Shadow Glass by Josh Winning. And it's based on those type of films. So it's a fantasy book and about these puppets that come to life. Um, so I'll read you the back a little bit. It says, Jack Corman is haunted by his father's failure. Director Bob Gorman poured his heart and soul into The Shadow Glass, a mesmeric fantasy film populated by puppets. It flopped, turning Bob into a self-pitying alcoholic. Jobless and mourning his late father, Jack returns home, a place overflowing with movie memorabilia and painful memories. But Jack's world is thrown into chaos when the puppets in the attic start talking, and so begins a desperate quest to save London from the evil creatures of his childhood stories. It says here, um, the fantasy adventure my 80s loving heart needed. I loved every moment. The Shadow Glass could easily stand alongside the Dark Crystal Labyrinth and the Never Ending Story, says some of the comments on the back of the book. And I just love the style of it, like that lettering, it's very iconic kind of lettering, and they've made the book look all distressed. Um, and I just, yeah, I was just, I'm, I'm in, I'm in. So I got this, so I'm very excited about that. I'll probably read it in about five years time. <laughs> um, but next I got some amazing books uh, from lovely booktube and Instagram friends. So some of the first books I received for my birthday were from my lovely friend Paula at Old Bookish Woman. And she got me, because I've never had a physical copy of it before, one of my favorite books, um, Reasons to Stay Alive by Matt Haig, which is his memoir of depression and anxiety. Doesn't sound very thrilling, but believe me, it's an amazing book, very, very uplifting. And if you've ever suffered with anxiety or depression or any mental health issues, it's a really um, inspiring book. So yeah, well worth reading if you've never read it before. It's very short, very easy to read. I say easy, it's a quick read. Doesn't necessarily mean it's an easy read, but it's also very positive. It starts off, it can be quite triggering in the beginning, but by the end, it's very, very uplifting. So yeah, really love this book. I've always wanted my own physical copy. And now I have, she also got me the most amazing uh, volume three of this Buffy graphic novel series, which is called From Beneath You, uh, which is a reference to, you know, the last season of Buffy. Um, but this is um, like a new revamp of the Buffy series, bringing them back to high school. And this is volume three. And I was really excited to get this. I love Buffy graphic novels because huge Buffy fan. So that was great. Next, my lovely friend Sally over at Salbo Reads and all of these people, I urge you, go follow them on Instagram or YouTube or wherever they may be. I'll link their, um, their accounts in the description box. And she got me two books I've wanted for some time. Two mysteries, really. One is Daphne du Maurier's Rebecca. I've never read Rebecca. I've never read any du Maurier. So I can't wait to get into this. And I love this edition. Don't you just love that cover? And then she also got me the Ruth Galloway um, series by Ellie Griffiths and this is the first book in that and um, Ruth Galloway is a clinical like a forensic psychologist or oh forensic archaeologist yeah that's right she's a forensic archaeologist and everyone raves about this series there's about 14 books in the series and I do like a good crime series 
from time to time. I'm not someone who reads a huge amount of crime and mystery, but I like a police procedural, and this is, seems to be one of those, and um, or, or you know, a crime procedural book. And this seems like a really good, good series. It's set on the Norfolk coast as well. So this is the first book in that series. Next, from the amazing Emily at Novel Novels, I got this beautiful, beautiful book, which I've wanted for ages. It got published this year, and it is The Dance Tree by Kieran Millwood Hargrave, who is one of my favorite authors at the moment. She publishes books for children mainly, middle grade YA, but this is her second book for adults. The first book for adults, The Mercies, was one of my favorite books last year, possibly. Uh, one of my well definitely one of my top three books last year and um yeah the dance tree this is set in Strasbourg in 1518 yeah and um it's all about um a hysterical sort of like you know we you know those things in history where um, hysteria would sweep through a group of people uh, and this was about a dancing hysteria that swept through the town at that time and I think it's based on a true event and um because the mercies was based on a true historical event as well so uh yeah it's supposed to be beautifully written she is a very lyrical poetic writer and i really like her work next this is beautiful just look at this it's got deckled edges as well which is amazing uh, so Kaikei, I think it's pronounced, by Vaishnavi Patel. And this is a new book because, I know it's new because Gemma bought it for me from Gemma Books. She sent it to me in a package with a face mask and some sweeties. I was all over it. Amazing. And she got this in the new book section because she's like trying to figure out something that I don't have. So she says, I don't think you'll have this. No, I don't. I've not even heard of it yet. Isn't that cover just stunning? Um, so it is... Um, Asian inspired fantasy. And I'm just gonna read you the little um, opening it says here. I was born on the full moon under an auspicious constellation, the holiest of positions. Much good it did me. So begins Kaikei's story, the only daughter of the kingdom of Kekaya. She is raised on the tales of the gods. So yeah, I'm very excited to get to that. What really surprised me was my older brother bought me some books without consulting me as to what books I had because they, my brother's always would love to buy me books but then they're like they'll pick up a book oh jack will like that and invariably i have it but i didn't have this one uh, this is an illustrated life a bowie an illustrated life and you know i love a bit of bowie so um yeah so another bowie book to add to my collection and this is absolutely gorgeous so it's um look at this all the way through absolutely fantastic illustrated biography of bowie just stunning i just love it absolutely beautiful so i love this so so much um really really pleased to get that because i've not even seen it before i didn't even know it existed so yeah i can't wait to get stuck into that so that's all of my birthday books so far because i do think there are still some on the way from people apparently which is really lovely to hear i'm just so touched and overwhelmed when i get sent books it's nothing better than getting a package of books in the post and I got a couple of games and I am gonna share those with you because one of them is an adventure book game. I picked this up because I was given a wonderful like uh, give, send off from the school that I just finished working at and the team there got me a Waterstones voucher and I didn't buy books with it because I knew my birthday was coming up and people might buy me books. So, but I did buy this, The Princess Bride Adventure Book Game. Look at the artwork on this game, absolutely beautiful. Um, and when you open it up, it's a board game, but it's done um, as a book because of course the Princess Bride is based around stories and a book. It's based around the story itself. So this is the adventure book game. And when you've got the board like that, the board, you play through each scene of the book and they're called chapters. So it's the, the board is like a book. So you've got all the different chapters. And I love the, um, at the very end we've got here, Cliffs of Insanity, so you play through the different scenes of the film, and then you've got, at the very end, always cracks me up, have fun storming the castle, which is the Billy Crystal line. I love it so much. Um, yeah, so really loved that, so nice. And the other thing that I got, uh, game-wise, was some David Bowie bingo, which uh, came with the illustrated Bowie book that my brother got me. So I haven't opened this yet, but how glorious is that? So I'm just inserting some footage because after I finished filming, I got a lovely parcel from Alice so over at Alice in the Giant Bookshelf, who is just a legend, I love her. And we've um, been chatting about um, dystopian books when we went out for our walk the other week. So she sent me a copy of How I Live Now, 
uh, by Meg Rossoff, which um, apparently was made into a film with um, Saoirse Ronan. And uh, yeah, because I was like, oh, I think I've heard of the name. Where have I heard the name before? Um, but yeah, we were chatting dystopian fiction because she loves it and I really like dystopian fiction as well. So um, she sent me this and I'm so excited about this one as well the complete Suki Stackhouse short stories because I don't have these and um, you can't sort of get, I'd love them on audio, you can't get an audio of them which is ridiculous uh, because the audio books are brilliant and the short stories are sort of usually in, take place in between the novels and as we know I jumped the gun and read the um, August book, uh, Suki book early and I'm doing the Out of the Coffin read along with Ange and Amy and um, yeah so this will um, scratch the itch I have to read Charlene Harris's books. Um, I've been so excited to get this because it's gorgeous and not only did she send me these but she sent me a lovely cat themed card. This looks just like Pedro, my cat, who's elusive and you never see him on this channel sleeping on a pile of books and she made me a little crocheted Pedro as well which is little green eyes um, um, and I'm over the moon and my Pedro is also a cat bookmark. Quite a lot of cat themed things which is perfect because I love my cat. So um, Alice, thank you. Um, just wanted to insert this footage in. Right, back to earlier me. Cute, right? So many cute things. So yeah, that will be my last book haul for a while. Aside from books that I'm sent for review, maybe the odd secondhand book, I am going book shopping tomorrow. Uh, with someone. I'm going with Claudia. She's coming to London and she said, do you want to hang out and buy some books? I was like, sure. And I do have some birthday money. So I'm going to go secondhand book shopping with Claudia from Spinster's Library tomorrow. Um, and we're meeting at Euston. We're going to the British Library and then we're going to take a walk to some quirky secondhand bookshops that are not far. Um, it's quite a long walk, but it'd be a nice walk and it's supposed to be a lovely day. So you might see that I have some more books. I'm saying this is my last book haul for a while, but it might be that I'll get some more. I'm not going to try and buy too many. I've got a specific book that I'm after, a specific classic that I'm after, so I'll definitely get that if it, com if it comes up. But if I see something else that's on my list and has been for a while and it's a bargain, I'm gonna to have to get it. <laughs> After saying I wasn't gonna buy any more books, I went out and bought some more books. Forgive the footage, it's late at night on a Friday. I kind of want to film this while I've got a bit of time and um, add to my book haul video. So yesterday I filmed my birthday book haul video. I put in extra footage because I got a book, book delivered just straight after filming the video. And then today I went out book shopping with this lovely lady. Um, Claudia from Spencer's Library who uh, is in London um, where she was today and uh, we'd met up we went to the British Library it was a beautiful sunny day here in London not too hot as it has been so it was perfect for just hanging out so we went to the British Library to the treasures room we saw some lovely things I might put some pictures up here like Jane Austen a letter from Jane Austen um, to her brother we saw loads of loads of lovely lovely things anyway and then we went to this uh, beautiful bookshop, Wild on the Water. I didn't buy anything there because I used to sell a lot more second-hand books and um, there was a lot of very new um, books and I was specifically looking for second-hand because I've got a little bit of birthday money but I've got a huge amount so I wanted to eke it out, of course. <clears throat> and I was looking for some specific classics but I thought if anything catches my eye that's really bargainous, I will get it. So we went to, from there, we walked up from King's Cross up the canal to Camden Town. We went to Boomcat Books in the Stables Market and I bought two books there. Um, one of which was, I'm pretty sure, well, I can't remember where which books I bought where. I bought two books there and then we went over to Walden Books on Harmood Street in Camden Town, which is a stunning, very Instagrammable bookshop because it's just this beautiful bookshop tucked away on a quiet street. And um, Claudia and I were both remarking how, you know, when you're in Camden Town, it is absolutely packed out with tourists, really, really busy. You can't move for people, uh, but you go right to Harmood Street opposite the stables, suddenly everyone's gone and this little, little bookshop's there and you've got time to browse and it's quiet and it's beautiful. So I'm gonna show you what I bought. So I bought a copy of Goodnight Mr. Tom. I got this in Boomcat Books actually, just remembered. Um, I've wanted a copy of this for a while because I'm gonna be 
uh, needing it for a project that's coming up. So more about that at some point soon. I bought a copy of uh, Far From The Madding Crowd. Um, I wanted to read Hardy um, and this is probably going to be a Victober read for me but um, and a buddy read so um, planned so I've got yes Far From The Madding Crowd. I got Silas Marner, George Eliot. Um, I've never read any George Eliot. Again, this might be some Victober reading for me. And then I got some, um, oh, this was a bargain. I got Sarah Waters, A Little Stranger. It's practically a new copy. Um, and I got that for two pounds. Bargain again. Um, and then three historical fiction set in the classical period, the classical Roman and Greek period that is. So uh, I've got this I've wanted for ages. This is um, John Williams Augustus. I actually had the audio book of this and I wanted the actual book and it costs a fortune to order it um, online and I never see it in bookshops. So yes, this was a bargain. I think I got this for like quite cheap too. Three pounds, great. And then I picked up two Mary Reno's. So if you're not familiar with Mary Reno, she writes historical fiction based in the classical period. And this particular set of books, Fire from Heaven and The Persian Boy, are about Alexander the Great. They're a series. So it's the first book, second book in the series. And I've never read her, so I'm very excited about that. Oh, and I had one more ancient classic. I've got something about this. I love these. I've got a few of these from my time when I did um, my degree. Um, this kind of old... Uh, Penguin classic, very old Penguin classic, and this is um, Sophocles, Electra, and other plays. So um, I'm reading Sophocles Theban plays in August with a lovely friend of mine, uh, Lynn uh, from Flick Reads, and she is. Um, we're going to read Antigone. So I picked up some other of Sophocles plays, and I just couldn't resist because I love these old Penguin editions. So back to. <laughs> Back to me from yesterday. Hopefully I will see you again here soon. Bye.